of August 23rd, 2022 to order. Roll call, please. Anna here. Carrillo here. Shinsky here. Laura here. Kavich here. Wisikowski here. Oldani here. Seepert here. Chandler here. Okay, if you'd all take a look at the minutes of August 9th, 2022. And if there's any corrections, discussions, if not, motion, please. Well, Danny moves to approve the minutes of the Planning Commission meeting Tuesday, August 9th, 2022. See for seconds. Uh, roll call, beginning with Christine. Anna abstains. Shinsky, aye. Lorik, aye. Kavich, aye. Wysikowski, aye. Well, Danny, aye. Seeper, aye. Chandler, aye. Okay, and that will get us to significant common council actions. Uh, Carrie, if you would. Council approved the following. An ordinance rezoning portions of the properties at 2231 West Putes Road, 8843 South 13th Street, and 8950 South 20th Street to RD1 to Family Residential. No change to the FW Floodway, FF Flood Fringe, or C1 Shoreland Wetland Conservancy Districts. Also, a planned unit development overlay. Approved an ordinance adopting an amendment to the comprehensive plan. City of Oak Creek adopted March 3rd, 2020. Last amended March 1st, 2022. For the property at 7977 South 13th Street. And a resolution approving a certified survey map submitted by Daniel Katona for the property at 9630 South Shepherd Avenue. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, before we move on, I just want to bring it to everybody's attention that item 7B preliminary subdivision plat has been pulled, been canceled by the request of the applicant at this time. So uh, if it ever comes back around and you're, you're affected by that, you will get due notice. Uh, if you're here for that item, you may want to uh, decide to stay or decide to leave. That's completely your decision. So, okay. Um, we'll get us to item five, uh, Board of Housing and Zoning Appeals. There were no actions. Uh, quarterly Parks and Recreation Commission actions. Our next report will come September 27th, 2022. And that'll lead us right into new business. And that is a signed plan review for a master signed plan submitted by Oak, Oakview Industrial Properties uh, for a multi-tenant building on a property at 10303 South Oakview Parkway. Jack? All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you said, this proposal is for the master sign plan review for the multi-tenant industrial building on the property at 10303 South Oakview Parkway. Uh, per the proposal, there will be one raceway mounted chan channel letter wall sign allowed on the east elevation of the proper of the building. These tenant wall signs cannot exceed 10% of the face of the wall on which the sign is to be located or 30 square feet, whichever is more. That lines up to the current zoning code um, for the M1 zoning district. Uh, NCAP tenants will be allowed one additional sign on the north or south elevation, measuring up to a maximum of 100 square feet. Plan Commission may approve NCAP signs as part of the master sign plan. And then additionally, a monument sign has been requested on the directly south of the west axis of the parcel. Uh, this cannot exceed 10 feet in height, and the sign area shall not exceed 100 square feet. This lines up with the code as well. And then uh, finally, there's one directional sign that's proposed on the uh, south, near the south truck access. As you can see, the south truck access that's on the bottom of the screen, it's kind of hard to see. And then the monument sign is proposed on the middle right of the property near that east access. Um, this is a, an example, this is the proposed wall signage area for the east elevation. And apologies in your staff report, it does say the west elevation. That is a slight typo. It is the east elevation that is the um, proposed um, tenant space that, for the sign, master sign plan. Again, here are the end cap elevations. That's, um, this is on the south and north elevation for the building. And then here's the proposal for the monument sign. Um, with that monument sign, um, not only are the regulations um, guiding that in the master sign plan, and a monument sign was proposed with this plan. However, that monument sign, um, the base of that monument sign does not meet the zoning code um, as it does not extend horizontally from the sign face a minimum of 10%. That's something that will have to be re resubmitted with the 
um, as the um, applicant resubmits the signed permit applications. And then also included with that should be landscape plans for the monument sign as required for code. And then here's the directional sign. With that being said, there is a suggested motion for approval on the screen. But actually, there's one more point. Um, the master sign plan also mentions the use of temporary wall-mounted banner signs prior to completion of permanent wall signage. Um, for this to go through, this would require the applicant to obtain temporary sign permits um, subject to the code. But with that being said, there is a suggested motion for approval. Thanks. Thank you, Jack. Um, is the applicant with us? Would you like to say anything before we begin, or would you like to wait for questions as they come? Uh, you have to come up to the mic. Yeah, you can't speak from the floor. So we'll need your name and address, please. Oh, one more time. Let's make Sean. sure you're on the mic. Yep. Up. Is it lighting up, Brad? If not, press that little. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, never mind. Sean Relkin, 21700 Durrell Road, Waukesha. Okay. Um, we'll. Sure, there'll be some questions here and there. So, uh, Christine, you want to start us off? Oh, before we do, um, thanks, Brad. We do have one resident that asked to speak, so if you'd like to come up, Maggie, come on up. Yep, name and address. Hi, I'm glad I can see you in person this time. Last time we talked, we were Zooming all over, and I think I could see you, but you couldn't see me. Uh, Maggie Menard Miller, M-E-N-A-R-D hyphen M-U-E-L-L-E-R, 320 West Oakwood Road. Um, yes, my husband and I lived right across the street from that huge building. Um, and the problem we have with the proposed signage is there's really no need for a north sign on the north side of the building. If a truck comes down Oakwood, they're illegal. They're not supposed to come down that way. They're the only ones who would see it, except for us. We would see it 20, you know, not 24 seven, but every night it would be lighting up red or whatever color it might be. Um, so we really don't see the need for a sign on, on the north end of the building um, facing the residences in the cemetery. Uh, we already have enough light pollution from this pr uh, development. The lights that went in uh, that are over the docks shine directly into our house every night. Um, it's not so bad in the summer, but now it's, the days are getting longer and we're noticing them earlier now. Uh, I did give the plan commission Jack, uh, a picture of it today to show just how bright, you know, that we're already lit in our house. There's a way to fix that, I think, and one would be to adjust the lights either lower or tilt them 45 degrees toward uh, the south so they're not, you know, spreading the light all the way to our house. Um, also, there's a landscaping gap that was created. We really appreciated the berm, but they stopped putting the nice bushy fir trees right in front of the, where the lights are. Instead, they have these little scraggly deciduous trees that aren't going anywhere. I mean, they didn't water them all summer and they look horrible. Um, I, I would be a very, very old person by the time they would block any light. So maybe there's some fixing that could be done there to help block the light and end the light pollution that's really plaguing us, um, other than the fact that there's a monster building across the road from us. Um, and my husband couldn't be with us. He's recovering from a heart attack. Um, but, and he's kind of given up on all this, he said. <laughs> but um, I know that he keeps a track of the trucks that still come down Oakwood. He, he submits that to the police chief on a regular basis. It's still a major problem on, our, on Oakwood Road. And I know there's some other people here from the other end of Oakwood Road. They probably get the same kind of thing going on down toward them. OK. Um, appreciate all this, Maggie. We're a little off. The agenda point to right, I mean, I we're know. really so here signings, for science, but, I'm here. <laughs> but uh, I did make some notes, and some of that stuff can be taken up through um, our inspection departments, like the shades, to make sure that we don't have spray light going. All right, uh, things like that we can talk about. That. All right, thank you. We're all well well aware of the truck traffic and things that are going on. So, um, okay, anybody else that wants to talk about the sign and the agenda item? I know you guys probably want to spout about the trucks, and I, I get it. I totally get it. No, ma'am, you're shaking your head. No, would you like to speak? 
on up. Uh, okay, I'm here for the agenda, though. We can talk off the record. I want to talk about the agenda item, ma'am. Oh, I said, do you want to talk about the agenda item? I said, do you want to speak? So, again, we're going to try to stick to the agenda item. We can talk after the meeting if you'd like. I'll be here afterwards. So if there's any other questions concerning the signs. Okay. Uh, we'll take it to the council. Uh, Christine? I have nothing. Thank you. Go on. I just have a quick question. Uh, you refer to um, temporary signs? Yeah. In the master sign plan, um, what was requested was that before the permanent signs were um, placed on the tenant space, um, the um, there would be temporary signs on that tenant space describing um, what business is there. Um, but that would just require a temporary sign permit. Um, but the master sign plan call didn't acknowledge that. Okay. That's just a discrepancy. Okay, so it's just something. Yep. Okay. Got it. Nothing else. Okay. Ashley? Nothing from engineering. Thank you. Uh, Greg? So this is just um, proposing locations of signs, correct? There's no specific sign yet. That is correct. The only specific sign that was included in this proposal was the monument sign, but as far as the tenant wall signs go, those are just signage locations. Okay. And the the allowance for a sign on the north side, is that because there's a door there? Yes, that is up to plan commission to determine if that um, if the end cap sign will be part of the master sign plan. And is it possible um, I guess to put a condition that that would remain unlighted as a possibility if the commission determines or is that not any signs that are part of a master sign plan you would have the opportunity to pl place any restrictions on them if you so chose there are requirements for signage and lights to actually be extinguished by 50 percent during non-business hours however um, when it's a 24-7 operation, that's a little bit difficult to impose because they're open all the time. Um, so if you do place a restriction on the north end cap tenant, um, you may want to consider that also for the south end cap tenant. I know that faces inward toward the, uh, the business park, but you're going to have an unbalanced building. You're going to have two tenants that don't have equal representation in terms of signage. And I'm just, I, I'm not familiar with the site in person, but just looking at the site plan, are there, is there a walkway to the, to the north and south door? So the, it's not clear from the site plan, but I believe there is a walkway there. Um, it's not very wide or anything. It's just an access path if it's if it's actually there according to the site plan i believe it's that blue line that's kind of going around on the east side and then wrapping around the end cap tenants okay thank you hey greg chris hey no questions don no questions fred no questions and chaucy i do have a question for the applicant In regards to the directional signs, can you provide a little more information about those? Uh, at this time, it's just the directional on the south side of the property. Um, specific questions pertaining to the sign itself? Yes, because the other signs, that, to my understanding, there will be lights for the other signs. What What's involved with the... So the directional is not sign. illuminated. It's it is not? Or not illuminated yet. It's not. all aluminum okay. body, mm -hmm. exterior grade vinyl. Okay. And uh, just a quick question for Jack. So in our documentation, there was the request for more details. Is that answering planning's question just with the lighting and their location? Yes. There was, um, before the... When the um, staff report was published, there was just an issue with the um, export of the PDF document that was provided to me, um, and the sign plan um, didn't include the directional sign, but that has okay. been included in the 
um, overall P plan commission packet and that's um, what's up there is correct. Okay, thank you. And then one additional question in regards to the each tenant sign and the end cap signs on the various sides of the building. Can you provide more information on kind of their purpose and who will notice those signs? Well, each each sign is it's for each tenant to represent their their business. Um, I don't think there's any ad advertisements or anything like that. It's just for the the name of the company. Um, I think the plan originally was to do uh, what they've done at the other developments, was, which was box signs, but I believe that was ixnate in the code earlier this year. Um, so we just went back to wrist or mounted channel letters. So uh, to help me better understand the traffic that will see these signs, are they individuals who will utilize the business or is it more to share who you are with the resident? I can't speak for those individual tenants. Um, I would imagine it's, it's mainly to identify that that's the company that's in that building, um, truck traffic, um, employees, if there is foot traffic for customers. Okay, thank you. I actually have another question. If you yes, mind. go ahead. Okay, so for the lighting of those signs, okay, like the resident mentioned here, and this is going to be towards uh, the north, correct? I think um, the resident had an issue at the north side. Correct. And if there is no trucking going on Oakwood, which is not permitted, what are those signs, the illuminated signs to do? They can be signs, but no illumination needed. So what is the purpose of the illumination of those signs? Well, at this point, there's no signs that have been applied for at all by any tenant or the developer. Um, I would assume the same for that north side is just to identify that that tenant is in that building. Okay, so what I'm saying is if there's no trucking to guide the trucks where they enter, where they exit from, and uh, it's just to identify those businesses, which I am assuming there's no access during the night unless it's 24-7 access. I guess maybe we can add a restriction, Terry, if that would be possible for for us to avoid illumination after morning hours or afternoon hours. If you wish to if you wish to restrict the illumination on the north and south end cap tenant signs, then you would put that as a condition of approval. Or if you do not wish to approve of the end cap signs that is also within your purview. I guess I would only be looking at the north side versus the south because this is more facing residents more than the south end. Again, you have a little bit of a sure. disconnect between the two end cap tenants. So you would have one uh, allowance for one tenant, but not the other. It's a little bit unbalanced. Okay. And in that case, you would end up having my assumption that one tenant that's been restricted saying, why can't I have the same allowance as the other end cap tenant? We're in the same building. I guess. And just to, I guess to clarify, as as the site plan and the building plans are drawn up now, there was only one tenant that would be on that north end. If, but I don't know how they're gonna delineate lease lines and all that stuff eventually. So if there ends up being just one business on that far end, and that's their only place to put a sign, then they're definitely restricted in the future. So I guess maybe my question is, based on that tenant concern, how are you able to address that? She has a concern. How are you going to be able to address it or mitigate that, I guess? Perhaps a different way of saying that, would the landlord be amenable to having the north and south and cap signs non-illuminated? I would have to confer with them. I, I don't, they're pretty easy going. I don't think they would have an issue with it, um, especially given residents having issues with illumination on top of the light pollution that they already talked about. Okay. I would have to talk with them. Okay, I would appreciate that. Yep. Okay. Um, I got to my point. 
Uh, the signs are of the proper size. Uh, without a doubt, we do want the balance building. One points inward to the front of the entrance and one points oakwood. Uh, Oakwood. Oh, one on the east or one on the west, Chad? The monument sign is on the east side of that parcel. It's on the east, which yeah. is going to be a non-factor. Um, I always say try to be consistent. In past, when we've had buildings similar to this, or even smaller, we've allowed end-capped units because the purpose of a sign is to be seen, and uh, business wants to be seen. I, I would favor putting them on the end caps, but not, not illuminated. And that would, again, we're not talking about the south side now, but whatever we do on the north, I would, whether I'm here or not, I would have inconsistency. Keep it that way for the building owner that the tenant knows on the south side they'd be non illuminated. Um, again, uh, regardless if, you know, whether it's trucks or not, and I don't, I don't want to <laughs> ruffle all those feathers again. But it could be somebody in a car coming down to look at that, an employee, too, trying to identify where it's at. Um, you know, if if it was an inward-facing light, maybe that would be different. If it was a ground light shooting up at the building, at the light. Um, but again, uh, I'll respect the neighbors on that. That is my opinion on this one as well, um, where the commission lies. I think that would be a fair enough compromise. Anyone else? Don? Yeah, just to be clear, <clears throat> we're going to see the signs come in when the detailed signs at some point, Jack? Yeah, uh, similar to other master sign plans, this is just given the locations and um, sign permits will be applied for and they will go through the um, planning, the Department of Community Development's review. Okay. Then I see no more point in speculating if they're going to be lit, how much they're going to be lit until it comes through my opinion it's true an example would help what would be the point? well to be clear if the master sign plan is is approved then they could proceed to permit applications those signs those individual signs would not come back to the plan commission unless they would be asking for variances gotcha. okay understood I guess we got to make it clear the intention so if our decision is to have non-illuminated, we would add a sixth. So my recommendation is if the plan commission wishes to add a sixth condition, it would be that the end cap signs on the north and south elevations are non-illuminated. Oh, go ahead, okay. Don. Knowing what you just told us, uh, you know, I just, as a commissioner, be careful that we're going to start adding our own restrictions as we go. Um, it's a slippery slope. I think like any other business that's been approved for the signs that they're afforded, then that's what they should be afforded. Um, if, if we do want to somehow approach uh, the applicants, you know, a after today and see if they're willing to cooperate and, you know, consider the neighbors, I, you know, that would be my suggestion. Then at that point, I would recommend that this item be held until that conversation can occur. If the plan commission wishes to have that input and the, the landlord is not present to answer that question, the only, the only way forward that I can see is to hold the item until we have that conversation. Or the plan commission can just deny the, the end cap signs altogether and they can come back. So those are your choices. Would rather hold them an opportunity to come. I'd rather they're always here, <laughs> you know, the first time. But give give them an opportunity, I guess, with with the neighbors here, see you know what they're willing to do. I would hold it as well, but we have to notice that one size doesn't fit all. It's not because we allowed it once, so we just have to look at it case by case. I, I would probably disagree with that. That's why we come up with the intention in the first place. Because um, it, it just could be a mess every single time we start deciding what the rules are and, and not what the intention was in the first place. Well, the, the code does say that 
and cap tenants are allowed by plan commission approval to have an additional sign. They're not necessarily entitled, shall we say, to have another sign. Understood. Is it within the commission's power to dictate when signs can be illuminated with this master sign plan? Can we do that in conditions and restrictions? Can we add that? Yes, that can be a condition of approval. Because a simple timer could solve all of this. Bro. It's a matter of at what point is the correct time to extinguish the illumination on the sign. And with, then we come into an enforcement issue, time of year, we, are you allowed to have it on till 8 p.m. or 4 p.m. as, or is it at dusk? I mean, those are more sticky situations than just yes or no. And ob obviously it's up to the plan commission, but if there are these questions and it does require the landlord's input, again, I would recommend having that conversation before an ultimate decision is made if that is going to be the deciding factor. So two choices, it goes as is, so, uh, I guess three, it goes with non-illumination, four choices. I just keep bumping it up here. No end caps or we hold. I would so, recommend to hold. If that's, if that's your motion, then. If everybody's okay with that or? Uh, we'll vote on it. Okay. Um. And I move that the plan commission uphold the approval of the master sign plan submitted by Oakview Industrial Property v. LLC for the multi-tenant industrial building located at 10303 South Oakview Parkway with the following conditions. Commissioner Hanna, are you, are you recommending, are you, is your motion to hold the item? Yes. Then you don't have to include the okay. conditions. Based on the <laughs> description of Gary. Is there a second to hold? Is it cost scale second? Uh, roll call beginning with Don. Hello, I. Mark, I. David, I. Is it cost I. Old Danny, I. Steeper, I. Chandler, I. And I. Okay. Uh, we'll go back to the drawing board on this one and try to figure it out. Again, we do want to be good neighbors. Uh, we do have some issues there, obviously, beyond the lights and some other things, but. Um, I have to alert, alert the dock lights. So it, I think it's valuable to have the owner here. So thank you for the input, Maggie. I appreciate it. Thank Tom for his reports. They don't go unnoticed. They don't go unnoticed. <laughs> so, okay. Um, moving right along, as I said at the onset of the meeting, uh, item 7B uh, has been held. So if you're here for 7B, uh, that one will be at a later date if they decide to bring it back. Uh, that will get us to 7C, and that's a plan review, site building, and related plans um, for a multi-tenant shopping center on the properties at 175, 175R West Ryan Road. Uh, Carrie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The properties that are on the screen, even though there are two addresses, these were previously approved in a CSM to combine them. So they the review is as if they were combined, and one of the conditions of approval should this move forward is that that CSM be recorded prior to submission of any permit application. So we'll just say that right at the start so that there's no confusion. But the proposal in the B4 zoning district is for an approximately 11,000 gross square feet uh, multi-tenant commercial building. Uh, they have identified one tenant space, but we'll get into that when we talk about the specifics of the approval um, this is subject to review under the previous zoning code due to the timing of the application submission. We have been working with the applicant and their consultants in order to address some issues, and there were some items that uh, required that the, the required the delay in this review. On the screen right now is the proposed site plan, uh, blown up a little bit on the right-hand side. It gives you an idea of what the five-tenant commercial space looks like including the parking areas. The access is actually shared. Um, it's an existing access with the two existing uh, multi-tenant commercial buildings that are right on the corner of Ryan and Howell and then the, the uh, multi-tenant building that is behind that. That's through an existing easement agreement. That was always anticipated to have those three properties 
be to have a shared access. One of the things that I'd like to draw the Plan Commission's attention to, since we have this on the screen, is at the bottom or on the south side of the property, you'll see that I've highlighted a, an approximate green area. Due to the location, right up against a single family residential neighborhood, there is an additional requirement for a buffer with the setback. So we've seen this prior in previous applications um, where this is a, a similar situation. So the actual setback for this particular property would be 45 feet because it's a 20 foot buffer in addition to the 25 foot setback. Now within the buffer area are certain requirements for landscaping and if they incorporate a fence, which they are proposing to do, um, they are actually limited um, to a certain thing. One, the fence has to be at least four feet high, but no taller than six feet. Uh, they do have to re comply with all of the requirements for fencing materials, opacity, uh, for the fact that the uh, the aesthetic side has to face the residential neighborhood, um, and it should wrap around the corners as well to ensure that the traffic is fully screened. They also need to locate that fence in such a way that would allow for landscaping in accordance with code to be incorporated into that plan. The plans that we've received don't, don't, do not show that right now. That would be one of the required revisions. The remaining setbacks appear to be met, although we do need to ensure that future submissions show all setbacks to the building and to the proposed pavement. There are some areas where we're just not sure exactly what that setback is. So going into the building details, already mentioned the shared access. Because this is a multi-tenant commercial property, it's a little bit difficult to determine exactly what's going to be in here for parking requirements um, to determine whether or not there are adequate stalls in the plans. They've identified one user, and that's Pizza Hut, and that is on the west end cap tenant. So for that particular use, the requirement is one stall for every 50 gross square feet of dining area, plus one stall for every peak shift employee. So that's 887 square gross square feet that they've identified being uh, part of the dining area for this tenant space with about three to five employees per shift. So that would, re that would be uh, one part of the requirement. General retail sales and customer service uses have a completely different minimum parking calculation. That's one for every 150 gross square feet of customer service area. So anywhere that um, the public can access, aside from restrooms, that would be included in trying to determine the minimum um, parking stalls. Plus one stall for every peak shift employee. Without knowing what the tenant mix is, without knowing who those tenants are and what those businesses are, without knowing exactly how many employees there are and the customer service space, everything is generalized and has to be based on gross square feet for the tenant space now. What we've received in the narrative is that they're anticipating about two employees per shift for the remaining tenants. Of course, that could change. So based on that information, anywhere from 89 to 110 parking stalls, according to the code, could be required. They are showing about 97. So it's up to the plan commission to determine whether or not that's going to be acceptable. They do have sufficient space to add parking in the future should that be required. Now, one caveat that we're going to be talking about also is pertaining to some of the staff concerns that were raised in the, in the staff report. On the east end cap, we have been talking with the tenants with regard to several iterations of the plan for whether or not a future drive-through could be accommodated by this end cap. Now, some of the comments that staff have made have been incorporated primarily being the elimination of the second lane on the east side, which is appreciated very much. But the concern remains for two-way traffic around the building and the potential conflicts there, because anybody could be entering from the north and south and trying to also be exiting that way when people are trying to go around for a drive-through. 
Now, drive-throughs or conditional uses, that would be a future request that would have to come before the plan commission. So this is a little bit cart before the horse, uh, um, but we have been speaking with them that if there is any anticipation for a future drive-through, these considerations should be incorporated into the plans now rather than having to revise them later. It's going to be much more difficult to incorporate that um, when the building is already in place. So some of the things, if that were to occur, um, are stacking. There are minimum stacking requirements in the code. You have to allow for four vehicles within a drive through lane that do not block any access points or required parking stalls. And that's where the concern comes in as well. We don't have any stacking diagrams. Um, so that would be something that would have to be considered in future layouts for a conditional use permit. But again, anything that can be incorporated into this base site plan right now for any future conditions, it's only going to serve to make things a little bit easier. Talked a little bit about the potential traffic conflicts. We do have a secondary access point from that shared access on the south as well. And you can see there's two-way traffic there. What the recommendation from staff is, is to restrict traffic to one way around the building. Within the parking lot itself, obviously, it can be two-way traffic, but just that circulation around the building, restricting it to one way, eliminates the potential for so many vehicular and potentially uh, pedestrian conflicts. Because keep in mind that the back of house is on the south side of the building for all of these tenant spaces, and the detached trash enclosures are south of most of the parking. So you're going to have people that are going to be crossing these lanes of traffic. So we recommend that site circulation be incorporated regardless of whether or not there's going to be a future conditional use consideration for a drive through just full stop. Some other things to consider, um, landscaping and buffering requirements and lighting requirements. Some of the landscaping and buffering we've talked about for the south side, but there will be additional things that we talk about once we get to the landscape plans. Lighting, we did receive preliminary plans and photometrics, but we did not receive any fixture details for the building itself. We did receive parking lot lights. So with those parking lot lights, obviously there would be restrictions in terms of every single fixture having to be directed downward, shielded, shielded on the side that is closest to the residential neighborhood. Um, there is still the requirement in code for after hours being extinguished by about 50% without knowing whether or not any of these are going to be 24-7 operations, it's a little bit difficult, but it, it, it is still within the code that there are lighting uh, considerations when adjacent to residential neighborhoods. We are also recommending that the lights be restricted to the 3,500 maximum Kelvins on the south side, because that is the part that is, the parking lot is actually closest to the residential neighborhood on that side. So jumping to the landscape plan, we do have some considerations here, um, some things that would need to be addressed in revised plans, As, aside from the buffering requirements. Um, we, have, we have some labels for some of the detention pond plantings, for example, that don't actually appear on the landscape plan itself. So there's minor omissions that need to be incorporated in here as well. One of the things that does not appear on the landscape plan what does appear on a subsequent civil plan is a retaining wall on the west side. And this just shows lawn area with uh, plantings, and there's just no way that those two can exist in the same space. So we need to have consistency amongst all of the plans, civil, building, landscaping. They all need to match. Um, and then we also need to have the minimum um, height requirements for all of the screening materials. So all of the heights at installation and maturity for all of the proposed plants need to be included on the plans. So those are all of the items that need to be incorporated into the landscape plan. Those are all laid out in the staff report. If there are any other minor modifications, we'll certainly work with the applicant to make sure that those are incorporated. Turning now to the building, the proposed Exterior building materials for all elevations include uh, minimum four inch thick brick. That's required per, per code. 
So even though the plans have some labels that do, do not match, you have some labels that say thin brick, some labels that say modular four inch brick, all the brick needs to be four inches. That's a re code requirement. Also included are fiber cement siding, glass, and EFIS as an accent material. Now remember under the old code, EFIS was allowed within the visible perimeter of the building up to a maximum of 25% as an accent. On no elevation does the EFIS go above 25%. In fact, it's below 25% on all elevations as proposed. There are windows on every elevation, including all the end cap, except for the south tenant. Uh, there, it's unclear whether or not all those doors are going to be solid or if there would be a window incorporated, but that the south is the only exception with regard to windows. There is one bank of windows on the east that is identified as, we're assuming, spandrel. Um, spandrel was identified as a label that was supposed to be on a plan that we did not receive, a sheet plan that we did not receive. So we're assuming that the, the windows that show up as white on the east elevation are intended to be spandrel. They may actually be eliminated altogether depending on what the tenant space is on the east. Again, this is that space that we're not entirely sure whether there would be a future conditional use permit request for a drive through So that will largely be based on tenant uh, and operational needs, whether or not those windows would be there. Now, you know, we've seen signs on the building. Those are only placeholders. Because this is a multi-tenant building, a master sign plan would be required prior to any sign permits being issued for any of the tenant spaces. There are two proposed trash enclosures that are, again, on the west side of the south parking lot. They are proposed to be thin brick. I think staff has less of a concern for the exterior material for the trash enclosure being thin brick. The actual construction of the trash enclosures are proposed to be with CMU block. Um, just want to make sure that if thin brick is going to be incorporated for the trash enclosure itself, it needs to match the building. and those thin brick materials need to be substantial enough that you would not be able to tell and need to be able to stand the test of time. In other words, we don't want the colloquial lick and stick. We want to make sure that these bricks stay. The other part of the trash enclosure that I'd like to draw your attention to is the gates. They are proposed to be constructed um, with a fiber cement material, and just like every other trash enclosure that we've you know, reviewed in the city, we recommend against the use of fiber cement simply because we did have that fire concern. We have experienced a fire with uh, the use of that material on a previous dumpster enclosure. Want to avoid that altogether. So uh, we recommend a non-combustible material such as metal, but it cannot be chain link. With all of that information in mind, there is a multi-part suggested motion with conditions for plan commission consideration. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, I do not see anybody that signed up to speak on this. Um, uh, would the applicant like to come up, say a few words, or you just want to wait on questions? Uh, sir, name and address, please. My name is Alejandro Bernal, and uh, I come from Dallas, Texas. We'd like to hear your question. Okay, thank you, Carrie. Um, then we'll go right to the commission. Uh, Jossie, you want to start us off? Sure. I do have a question for the applicant. So, could you share information on the actual flow of traffic plan for this site? Okay, as, uh, as she mentioned before, um, we have two entries, and uh, we were planning to just have like um, going in and going out from those two, and actually in the other side too. But we're just um, aware, and we can work with the city with whatever we we can meet by the community. Okay, so it is acceptable to have around the building, do I have this right, Carrie? Around the building is one-way flow, 
and so, wherever the lots are. Correct. So mm -hmm. um, where you see two-way traffic on the west elevation or the west side of the property, we're recommending that that be reduced and restricted to one-way traffic. And we also recommend that the existing restriction for one lane and one-way traffic on the east remain. Two-way traffic for accessing the parking stalls on the north and south, that can remain. We just want to make sure that traffic-wise around the building, it is restricted to one-way traffic. Now, the only kind of questionable area is that drive aisle between the parking stalls that are immediately south of the building and that first bank on the, um, on the median. So uh, that would be something that might have to have a conversation about whether or not the flow could still work if a um, drive-through were to come through at a future date for that flow around the building, but at least restricting the west side. So that's acceptable for you? We, we can we can work about it. Okay. I'm not committed, but like we can talk about it and have a conversation. Okay. And then could you also share the pedestrian access to this area in relationship to all the traffic flow? Yes, I think we will be able to like have something for you uh, for the pedestrian area. I don't have it over here with me right now, but we can share something about it. Uh, just to orient the commission, in the graphic that is on the screen, the north side is where the public entrance is. My concern with the pedestrian access is there seems to be a great deal of parking on the south end be behind the building. So there would be potentially traffic parking behind the building and then having to go around to get to the entrance. More likely, it's going to be employees that are using those service doors on the south to get to the trash enclosures, which are quite a distance away from the building, having to cross those, those drive aisles. Any comments? in regards to those suggestions or concerns? Um, let's just say, like, we were probably going to have, um, depending on the stuff that we have in there, uh, all of those back doors are going to, like, access to the commercial, retail, or the restaurant that we have in, um, going straight to the, the trash enclosure. Okay. And then could you also uh, provide information in regards to the windows? appears that we have two different sets of windows. Yes, so I hear that coming. Um, in the back, we're not going to have windows. And on the east side, what we usually do with those ones is, in the future, we would like to uh, try to see if we can, our brand, we have KFC in, in there too. And that's kind of like one of the things that maybe we would like to talk in the future. And that white one is always uh, where the kitchen is established, and we always cover that window, uh, that part. Okay, so it, it's unique to that particular um, tenant, those yes, type of windows. It's, okay, it's unique to those type of mm -hmm. windows. Um, but we would like if is it depends of like if we have some retail spaces we like to use it, they will have like a film that cover that part where they have like a storage or something like that. If that's gonna be the case, then staff would recommend that that portion that would be dedicated to back of house that would be covered anyway, incorporate building materials to match what is there rather than just having windows that are gonna be, gonna be covered up or spandrel and not useful. If we have like a retail store for clothes or things like that, we actually usually leave it that way so in case that we can take away the film and that can be like more um, of a showing from the outside uh, for a retail store so that way like some some of these stores that we are kind of like trying to approach or trying to like uh, get into the the multi-tenant is actually going to have more visibility as a clothes a shoes store or even sometimes uh, T-Mobile, things like that for cell phones. 
So that way we just need to talk away the film and they have more visibility to customers. Staff's comments remain. If that end cap tenant ends up being anything other than a drive through restaurant component, uh, we would want to talk about the design of the pedestrian access around that building, possibly even eliminating that east drive through aisle. And if this is going to be a retail tenant that incorporates those windows, the windows would not be covered in film and they would be full glass windows to match the rest, not spandrel. Um, that would be the recommendation of staff. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do have a resident uh, that wants to say something. Come on up, ma'am. Uh, name and address. Um, my name is Melinda Dobbs, 10536 South Austin Street. The picture where I was showing you the retention pond, I actually yesterday just walked past that way. Um, and I guess my question, if if that's Ryan Road, is, is the bottom then considered the area where Hull Avenue would be? Uh, no, no it, it, this is strictly on Ryan. This is west of where George Because when they George. have the access, they're, they're going to have access from Ryan Road also, I mean from Howell Avenue also, correct? Well, they'd have to cut through the Georgie Porgy lot and uh, Gary's Lick. Right? Am I correct in that? That's that there, correct. There are shared entrances at one that comes into Georgie Porgy where he keeps his older antique truck on, right on Ryan. Okay. I'm thinking of the other corner. I, my apologies. No, I'll go not, sit not back a down. problem. Not okay. a problem. So, uh, go on up, sir, as long as, long as we're Take care of all this right away. Uh, Gary Hintz, 9555 South Howell Avenue. Uh, one of the concerns I have is the driveway that's being shared. Originally, when that was put in, it was only for the back building because when Maritime cut off the other driveways. And now another drive, when they redid Ryan Road, used to go down to the front. That's been cut off. So now that drive is taking on, basically, it's going to be three different properties. And when they put that in, it's only a real minimal width. In fact, the curb cut at the road is probably a good maybe 10 feet wider than the actual drive is. So I don't know. I think that that drive needs to be made wide enough to handle all this traffic now. I, I would defer to my traffic engineers on that, but we can take that in consideration as we go. But the easement does exist, if I remember the narrative. I mean, it shows, you know, the... Uh, little medium break there or a little little break between the driveway but it doesn't really show what's going to happen with that drive you're talking about the drive off of Ryan yes yeah it's, it's right minimal it's a, it's a, it's the, it's a shared easement right now again it's right designed for truck traffic yeah. plus it was designed only to take care of one property when it was originally put in and now it's taking care of three, basically three and then that one-way piece that's on the east side there uh, being that both accesses off that road are right there. He, he's not going to get an access off Ryan. He's going to have to share that for this property. This property is useless, but with the detention pond, and the state will never give him an open. No, no, I'm just saying there's there's two. Yeah, that one and then one farther down. We got we got some discussion on this whole lot layout, in my opinion, anyway. So yeah, because that, we'll that. that one way piece there, we have one short area by us that's one way, and believe me, with three signs, painted on the ground, on the walls, traffic doesn't pay attention to that. And if, if you're going to have people backing up, then they're going to be blocking off the main drive for trying to wait for somebody to come in or out of that area. So I think, if anything, the two-way traffic that's on the west side of the building should be that driveway on the east side of the building to alleviate that from happening. We'll get there. We'll have to take yeah, a look we'll at the language of the discussion as that. well. I don't want to take away from the commissioners and, and can, their can the other tenants be involved in this when this is being discussed or uh, it's likely that the tenants won't all be identified when yeah. the building is constructed and when the site is constructed so we'll, we would have to have that conversation with the actual developers to ensure that all that happens but the existing tenants we will talk to them as well We're talking the about buildings. the other property owners yes that's that's that what was I'm originally saying. all planned development correct correct and we'll have to take a look at what the easement language says for that okay thank you Or was I? Fred. <laughs> I have a question and a concern. Is the parking and the pedestrian getting into the facilities 
it seems that our traffic flow kind of affects it on the south side of the building. If you look at the parking, the traffic pattern, and people getting into the facilities, it appears that you have to go into the front on the north side to get in the buildings and nothing on the south side. So I see a major problem with that parking and pedestrian traffic going into the facilities. Also, I'm a little concerned about the drive-through. You know, we always seem to have a problem. People want to put a drive-through in on your building. And I think you need to plan for that now, even if you don't use it. But I think have them ahead of time rather than come back and then try to make changes later on. And then I have a question for engineering, Ashley. The retention pond that you have, does that retention pond cover just for this facility or does it take the whole area around there, like Georgie, Porgy, and so forth? The pond proposed add this parcel is strictly for this property only, not the rest of the existing. So that is a comment I will be providing as well, that we will need to see a stormwater management plan. So that's something that I'm currently not seeing, so that's just something that would be required to address. Thank you. Is that it, Fred? That's it. Okay, Don. I'd say I have way too many questions for one night on this. Um, my concerns are everything that Carrie said, and there just needs to be a lot of work on this. I don't... I don't like it at all uh, for every, all the reasons stated, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, Chris? Um, same. Okay. <laughs> Greg? I'll just briefly echo the, the pedestrian issue. Um, it, it's great that there's a walkway to get around the building on the, the west side, but you know very well that people are going to try walking down that narrow drive-through or alleyway or whatever it's going to be called. Um, so that's definitely of concern. Um, and then I would echo staff's comments about the windows on the east side. Um, you don't want to put in windows and then cover them up. I know we have issues with other buildings throughout the city where they put windows around the building and then started building structures and stuff. So, um, if you're going to have windows, keep the windows. If not, don't put them in. So that's a concern. Um, I would urge you to look at options of letting people come in through the back doors, um, whether it's putting glass doors there as well to let people come in that way. Um, I understand that the, the floor layout of Pizza Hut doesn't allow it. You're obviously not going to have customers walking through the kitchen area. Um, but if there's options to allow entrances through the back, I would suggest that as well. Okay. Ashley? Um, in addition to the stormwater management that's required, for this, um, a development agreement is also required for the public water main. Um, I've been in conversations with the developer about that. Um, we also have concerns with that stacking, as well as others have mentioned here, if there is a potential drive-through on that east side. Um, and then we can look into that driveway with, as, as mentioned. Uh, I think that hasn't been already brought up. Christine? Uh, one question, actually. So do we have any delivery trucks for these businesses or Pizza Hut, I should say? Yes, we, for Pizza Hut, we have a delivery truck. So are those going to be through like a, a loading dock or how are they going to be unloading their produce or products? They, they go in the back. Uh, it's usually not that big of a truck. Uh, they usually just go in the back and just take out the dock. It's, be like it's not that that big so there is any parking for those trucks in the back is that being considered and looked at yes ma'am you'll be considering that part okay and the turning movement on those trucks so it doesn't encroach on the pedestrian or anything else any businesses out there no man you will be just flow with the with the same part yeah i'm just saying the turning movement of those trucks so do you did you do those so you make sure that it doesn't overtop the sidewalk or any other obstacles? Yes, ma'am. 
Um, actually, they are not like full 18 wheeler trucks. The ones that we use for the Pizza Hut, they're just like a little bit more smaller trucks. And depending on how often do we order the food is how small they get. And they usually just, um, this is a prototype of Pizza Hut, it's called Delco. It's a, it's a pretty small uh, Pizza Hut, it's not like a, like a full series or something like that. So like basically it's not, it's not going to like have a full amount of food inside those freezer of those coolers. They're, they come in a small trucks and usually our Pizza Hut are in this type of business. And they just go with the flow all the time. It takes like 20 or 30 minutes to like unload and come back. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mike, I was going to call you up either way. I wasn't going to let you come here for nothing tonight. Assistant Chief Havey. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, Assistant Chief Mike Havey with Fire. Uh, this uh, project seems that there's some complex issues for fire prevention measures. Uh, the initial proposal. Um, based on the, the building code calculations would not be a sprinkled building. However, not being able to identify the occupancy or classifications, measuring a hazard commodity for if it's mercantile or assembly, um, that creates a little bit of, of a conflict of, for fire protection systems or for an underground water um, private system needs to be installed and how that applies to the building. So there's some complex issues also with the, the access as well, because that changes some of our tactical operations if it's a non-sprinkled building. So I, I think there's some things that still um, are not addressed or there's some uncertain issues. Any other questions? Oh, thank you for the input. So um, hand it to you, commissioners. You guys pretty much took all my talking points, but it ain't <laughs> going to stop me anyways. So um, there's a lot of issues going on here, as Brian said. I, I mean... They mentioned a tenant of KFC, and if I'm correct in that, that's Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's going to require a drive through to get that out. Um, we need to go back and really look at this. We haven't even talked about the back end of them doing business. Christine touched on it with the deliveries, but we have garbage pickup. We have three neighbors that are impacted right to the back of this thing. Uh, a four foot fence mm -mm. ain't going to help them. I don't, I don't understand all this parking in the back and then there's no entrance. Everybody's going to have to walk to the front. Um, I don't support this in any way, shape, or form the way it's sitting. So, um, I, I mean, I would work with staff. I mean, we definitely want, you know, we want everybody to be successful and fit, but it's a little bit of a challenge here. Um, the two ways in and out, we kind of touched on that. There's, there's a lot of traffic engineering to have to go into this, and it, it, you know, it, it really has to be considered for some kind of drive-through uses going on in there. Um, I find it hard to believe the Pizza Hut one was. But, so now you're, you're dealing with a possible two-way drive-through, which is really a mess, you know. So um, at, at, the, at this particular time, you know, I, I, I would send it back. Any other discussions, questions? And again, it's hard to speculate on the tenants. We do, we do do spec buildings quite a bit, um, you know, but little different locations, little different things as well. Uh, we have a pretty good idea of what's coming this way. Uh, this one's a little bit of a unicorn. It can go all over the place. Um, so we really want to be cognizant of not only it fitting in with the neighborhood, but making sure that it's successful. If it's hard to get in and out of, no one's going to use it. It's not going to be successful. So for this, should we place it on hold to give the applicant time to connect with planning? Um, I, I would not support that. I, I, this is so bad that it's a hard no for me. That's just my opinion. Then, if that's the case, you'd make the motion in the affirmative in yep. your vote. If the recommendation or the, the motion from the plan commission is not to hold, but if the motion is for approval, you would make that in the affirmative and cast your vote in the negative. You could also just make a motion to deny. I would recommend making the motion in the affirmative and casting a vote in the negative just so that we're, everybody's clear what the actual vote is. Okay. So quick question. A deny versus a hold. What does the deny, the denial, do for the applicant? 
should if the recommend if the motion is for approval and that motion fails meaning that the plan is denied the applicant would have an opportunity to go back and substantially revise the plans incorporating all of the comments that have been made tonight and then resubmit a brand new application for that proposal or they could appeal I guess my concern is at least that they kind of know what the challenges are to give them the opportunity. Oh, I, I think they've heard it here. Yeah, to and not they, resubmit. I think holding it gives the, I guess it gives them the idea that there's just a few changes that might need to be made, whereas the motion failing gives them the idea that they substantially need to change their plans and come back. I, I would I would follow Carrie's, Carrie's premise. I think it's yes. just clear to go with a motion An A or a no or a no. All right. So how about a motion on second? Work moves to approve the site and building plan submitted by Julio Carrillo, EYM Realty, for the proposed multi-tenant commercial building on the properties at 175 and 175 R West Ryan Road, with the following conditions: number one, that all relevant code requirements remain in effect. Number two, that the certified survey map combining the properties is recorded prior to submission of building permit application. Number three, that plans are revised to incorporate all required setbacks and buffer areas. Number four, that the exterior brick veneers meet the minimum four inch thick requirement per code. Number five, that the plans are revised to include locations and screening for all mechanicals, transformers, and utilities. All mechanical equipment, transformers, and utility boxes, ground building and rooftop, shall be screened from view. Number six, that the landscape plans are revised to meet all code requirements and resubmitted for review by the plan commission prior to the issuance of building permits. Number seven, that the plans are revised to include a non-combustible and code compliant material for trash enclosure gates. Number eight, that a master sign plan is submitted for review and approval by the plan commission prior to submission of signed permit applications. Number nine, that a lighting plan be reviewed by the electrical inspector and approved by the plan commission prior to the issuance of permits. All light sources must be shielded and directed downward and the color temperature of the fixtures are limited to a maximum of 3,500 kelvins and that light sources adjacent to single family residential areas are shielded on the side of the fixture adjacent to the residential area. And number 10, that all detailed revised plans, site building, landscaping, lighting, etc are submitted in digital format to the Department of Community Development prior to submission of permit applications. Zikowski, I'll second. Uh, roll call beginning with Ashley. Chinsky, no. Lork, no. Davich, no. Zikowski, no. Muldani, no. Sleepert, no. Chandler, no. Anna, no. Rilla, no. Uh, confer with staff and you know, take another run at it. See how it can better fit our, our system. Appreciate you coming in. Uh, that will get us to item 7D, and that is consideration of a conditional use permit um, for a fuel sales fueling plaza with a retail building on the property at 10276 South 27th Street. Harry? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a request for kind of a redevelopment project on this particular property, and due to the nature of the proposal we did feel it was necessary to include some additional uh, information as part of the conditional use permit request rather than just for essentially a, a gas station which is the fuel sales and fueling plaza request um, the proposal includes a 6500 roughly square foot building that would have two tenants one would be the convenience store which is traditionally part of you know your typical gas station request but Part of the, of the building would also include about 2,200 square feet for a proposed bar. Um, and that is part of why we are including everything, including the building, as part of the conditional use permit request, because there are several considerations for the proposal, including the layout of the concept plan. Now, I want to emphasize this is a concept plan. Um, 
if the proposal were to move forward, there would need to be revisions required and additional reviews that would be required uh, prior to any kind of permitting. So this is this is the concept proposal for the for the redevelopment of the site. Just go over some of the details that were included as part of the of the narrative. They are anticipating up to 15 employees for all portions of the proposal. That includes the gas station component, the convenience store, and the bar. They are expecting up to five employees on site at any one time during any shift. We have no details for uh, the bar itself, who would be operating it, what their operational needs would be, their hours, or anything like that. The fuel sales would be 24-7, 365 days a year. Deliveries for the, the gas station component, they're anticipating fuel trucks about two to three times a week and to service the convenience store about six times a week. Again, no information on any deliveries to the proposed bar. There has been no request for outdoor storage or display of retail merchandise and to be consistent with any other similar proposal in the city, we would not be at staff level recommending that any outdoor storage or display of retail merchandise. This includes any kind of wood, any kind of uh, products that would be on display outside of the building for the convenience store. No windshield wiper fluid, no ice, no um, propane, nothing like that. Also prohibited at the pumps, and this is consistent with all of the other gas stations in the city. We do prohibit those things at the pumps due to uh, fire hazard considerations and also movement around those canopies and those uh, pump islands. You'll notice that there are two access points, even though the code requires that access be off of the secondary or the arterial collector street. There is already an existing curb cut on 27th street and that access is controlled by Wistot. It's because this was a previous restaurant and that access has been at least partially retained, but again, Wistot controls anything off of 27th street. Those approvals for um, that access would have to be submitted to the, to the city uh, prior to any permits being issued locally should this move forward. Due to the location, there are setback requirements that include buffering. Uh, that is partially shown on the east because there is a two-family residential zone property to the east. However, I will note that in this concept plan, the diesel pump location does not meet the minimum 50-foot uh, setback incorporating that buffer. Um, it does have to be 50, it does show 49. And no, it's only a foot, but that is the setback requirement. The concern also is that the location of the diesel pump is within an access aisle, and that reduces the width of the access aisle to below minimums as well. Uh, staff's recommendation at this point is to eliminate that or relocate it if this were to move forward. There are also some concerns with the the parking. Now we'll go into the minimums that are going to be required that would be incorporated into conditions and restrictions if this were to move forward. And that is one stall for every gas pump. It's difficult to determine whether or not what's shown on here is six pumps or if there are multiples on, on that fueling island um, under the canopy. So assuming that it's only six, then you would need at least six stalls. And then the remainder of the parking requirements are based on the building itself and the tenancy for that, which would be one stall for every 250 gross square feet of general retail. So uh, it's unclear whether or not the parking would meet those minimum requirements, but I can tell you in this concept plan, the way that they are designed and located does not meet minimum requirements for code and would have to be re revised. The other uh, consideration for this concept plan is it appears that everything is just slightly too far south to meet all of the requirements for setbacks and landscaping. So it would have to move north on the property in order to even incorporate some of the, the code considerations in, in order to be able, for staff to be able to determine whether or not they're met. 
No identifier for any kind of signage location. Again, those have to be located outside of all easements, outside of all vision corners, and they do have to meet setback requirements at minimum 10 feet from all property lines and rights of way. The stalls on the west side, staff is not in support of those at all. They are going right into an access point and there's just too many conflicts that are potentially located in that area. With regard to design and materials, that would be incorporated in a, into conditions of approval uh, as part of the next step if this were to proceed. The, the design of the building, the design of the site, the exterior building materials, the canopy height, aisle widths, all the landscaping requirements, lighting requirements and restrictions, signage, all of those requirements would be incorporated into revised plans that would also be brought back to the plan commission and incorporated into conditions and restrictions. Sorry, a little bit touchy on the mouse here. On the screen right now is what was previously presented to staff as part of a different request, and that was for a concept plan review. So I would ask that this be taken with a grain of salt, as this may have changed since the submission. But this is the proposed floor plan for the building itself. There are concerns that we would have to work with the applicant in order to address. This is what the proposed south elevation of the building would look like. Again, we would want to work with the applicant to ensure that all of the design materials and minimum requirements to meet code for those exterior building materials and design would be met. We have no information on the canopy. We do have concerns with that as well. We have no information on the lighting, the height, the fixtures, anything like that. Because this is a conditional use permit request and not site plan review, they are only required to, prevent, to, to present concept plans at this time. So with that in mind, the commission's initial review and recommendation, if it were to be recommended for approval of the proposed conditional use permit is not an endorsement of any site, architectural, landscaping, lighting, or signage plan that may be required as part of the final conditional use permit. I want to reiterate again, this is a conceptual plan that has been presented, and the conditional use permit request is for a fuel center and fuel plaza with retail building less than 50,000 square feet. With that information, there is a suggested motion for consideration by the Planning Commission on the screen. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, before we start, I have a resident that turned in a slip, Sarah. On up, please. Name and address. Hi, I'm Sarah Shreve. I live on 23 West 11 uh, Oakwood Road. Um, I'm not great at public speaking, so if I stop making sense, I've printed out a copy for it to submit to you guys. Um, there's several concerns about um, this plan. Um, I noticed that the slide up there failed to show that there is a house that is north um, of this development. So I know that one of the uh, recommendations. That's your house. Yeah, yeah I'm s sorry to hear that. What's, what's happening here because if the recommendation is to move any of these plans north, that's going to go into her property line. So first and foremost, um, we started a petition. We have in two days obtained over 88 signatures with significant concerns about this business being in our residential area. This is a residential area. There are two homes, one to the north and one to the east of this development. The whole street is lined with homes up and down both sides of Oakwood. This is not on 20, this is made to believe that it's on 27th Street. It is not one of the entrances and exits is leaving Oakwood Road. Um, so with that, there is significant concern about the environmental impact to our neighbors and all of us that live on that road. We have Many of us live on a community well, so uh, these um, fuel tanks that are going to be buried into the ground and, and causing um, a lot of runoff from all of the, not only the fueling tanks coming and going, and um, also with the motorists that are going to be fueling their, their pumps. Um, there's also concern about the health of our neighbors, not only just in our environment, but uh, there's children that live next door 
um, with uh, that are going to be uh, I think the plan says there's about 50 feet from where the diesel pumps are going to be um, there's also uh, an oversaturation of gas stations in our area there is six gas stations within a mile of this location five of them are on on Ryan Road and the owners are whoever submitted the permit I'm sure is here it's the same company spring south is the same company that is owns the BP gas station that is a mile down the road so um, that's just that's only just part of it there's also the safety of the pedestrians and the increased amount of traffic that's going to be coming and going from this area there's children that are loading and unloading from buses within a hundred feet of where the entrance and exit of this um, fueling station and now bar so that's even that's even more encouraging um, the noise and light pollution you know I listened to uh, the concerns about the sign on um, you know just for our neighbors just down the road imagine the people that have to live next to the fueling station that is going to have to have adequate enough amount of light because with fueling stations comes increased amount of crime there is uh, studies that show that there is a 6% increase in crime related to robberies, theft, panhandling, and drug use um, right next to our neighbors' homes. Um, so I've done a lot of research. <laughs> I have a, a whole lot of the addresses of all of the uh, gas stations that are, that are just within a mile of ours, but there's, there's also traffic concerns. Um, you know, when they talk about the fueling tanks coming and going, are they planning to come on Oakwood Road? I mean, how, how are their fueling tanks going to get to the 27th Street entrance and be able to leave from the plans that they've submitted? Um, there also is no median break if you're traveling south on 27th Street. So that means that any fuel tank that is traveling south to get to the 27th Street exit would have to do a U-turn in that intersection. Um, so uh, there's I also have just looked at um, um, just the pedestrian safety uh, there this is within just feet our, our children have to cross over Oakwood Road to load onto the buses the buses do not um, have routes that can always accompany our children coming right from the from the driveway so they're crossing over Oakwood Road right where people are coming and exiting um, um, the gas station and the church too um, and the hospital so I mean I just have some questions about you know if there is a survey just uh, related to the truck turning conflicts how they're going to be um, fuel you know how the fuel tanks are going to be coming and going how their supply chain is going to be coming and going they're not supposed to be coming on Oakwood Road as we talked about in some of the other reviews Oakwood Road has no, no trucking um, a, a restriction there's a three ton limit so if they're able to come and go from there then that would require them to have to do illegal u-turns from there I um, think that pretty much kind of summarizes without going into all of my extra stuff but um, thank you for taking the time to listen to our concerns thank you, Sarah. okay we, we get it you like it but please refrain uh, would the applicant, is he with us? You want the podium for a bit? Come on up, sir. Uh, hang tight. Let's give me equal time. And again, please, uh, keep, you know, I get it, but keep the clapping where it is. Let's keep it simple. Sir, come on up. Good evening. Good evening. I, I am Jay Walia representing Spring South. Thank you, all the concerned citizens. Uh, you got to be on the mic. Got to stay on the microphone. Okay, and thank you for all the members. And uh, before I, I really like, you know, I think that this is democracy in action. I really love, love people are involved there. And uh, I hear what their concerns are. I, I, one thing is, uh, I don't like the plan the way it is submitted. Because the one thing is, um, I didn't know that uh, there's a bar is not even right now. The way my understanding is, 
in the city of Oak Creek. There's not even class B license right now. And plus uh, that was like after the fact. That's not the, um, and then uh, I just, you know, read uh, with my father a little bit uh, about the, about that, I think there's a diesel pump on the, on the east of the building. And that shouldn't be there because of it. It's, it's a convenience store. It's not a gas station. It's not a truck stop. It's a convenience store. And uh, well, before we get too into location and turning points and what, everything like that, keep in mind this is a conditional use permit that we're looking at. If it's acceptable to have this type of business, and we're specifically talking about a gas station. One so, thing uh, I like to uh, amend my request either we. We can postpone it. There's no bar. Uh, it will be one tenant, um, one tenant uh, building, which is convenience store or gas station. And uh, I don't know if you want me to agree with it with that or um, there'll be no bar. There's no reason. We site. we actually have to vote on it as it's posted, so we have to follow this agenda. Am I correct in that, Gary? We're going to follow this agenda, and your request is for a proposed fuel fueling plaza development with a two-tenant retail building, less than 50,000 square feet, on the property at 10276 South 27. So that's what we're going to take into consideration. Mr. Mayor, yes. regardless of whether this is a single-tenant or a two-tenant building, it is still a request for a fuel Correct. fueling Correct. location a with, a, with a building. So that's what we're going to go with. So we're not going to engineer this on the fly or pull. We're going to deal with what's on the paper here in front of us. Okay. So um, basically, um, I, the way I see it, uh, it's a, it's you know, it's a 27th and it's a north, uh, a east corner of 27th main corridor, 27th and uh, a Oak Ridge a lot, which was uh, used to be the restaurant. And uh, now uh, uh, on the east side of the place is residential, as you can see. And then uh, north, uh, southeast is the church and the southwest corner, that's where the um, crypto cheese factory coming. And then, um, and then obviously a hospital already there. We, we get it, we have some very uh, diverse businesses and zonings going on here. And again, we're not concerned with the Franklin side. We have no control across 27th Street. Um, but again, we have an overlay district over 27th Street. Oh, it doesn't go down that far? How far does it go? I thought it went all the way to County Line. The overlay districts as part of the zoning code update were incorporated into the base requirements. There are no overlay districts anymore. The only overlay, the flexible overlay, pertains to the comprehensive plan. Okay, we'll get into that. So, uh, I just want to make sure uh, one thing: we are not um, uh, we are not going to have the bar. And uh, obviously, if you approve the condition use, and um, I'm just wondering if we bench it right now. If I request the application and come back with the modified. Um, actual plan, what we have planned, after we get the feedback. You may the, get your wish, depending on how this council votes. So. <laughs> no, but I, I, I really appreciate the feedback of I, all the I get it. We just, we just got to go through our process. Of if the follow. applicant wants to withdraw on the floor, that is an option. Um, but it may be beneficial for you to hear all of the concerns that are raised for this particular proposal so that if you do decide to go forward, you can incorporate that into a revision. I think that's a good idea, and I appreciate the, all the response, you know, concerned citizens, because without them, obviously, I want them to be, whatever I build, I want them to be my customer, and I love your feedback, yeah, because of, be yep, that's why I just want to, you know, make sure, you know, we are here to serve, and okay. uh, obviously, and uh, Okay. So, so I will hear the concerns. Let's, and let's finish up our process. Okay. Uh, let's let, you know, there's a couple of residents I know. There's probably a lot of you that want to weigh in, but if we're going to get redundant uh, for time's sake. We'll a couple of uh, issues they brought up which um, about the related to petroleum industry, 
I just wanted to bring it up because of if uh, condition used on the road got approved, uh, one thing for the environmental, I want to bring up the issue, one of the, one of the issues that my neighbor brought it about uh, environmental. But uh, right now, uh, the way the laws are, we have everything double wall that's required by state and uh, federal, uh, state, federal uh, state and city. Uh, mostly state uh, required. It's all double wall, and there's a, a, even tanks are double wall, pipes are double, double wall, and there's a sensor in between. If anything, it comes Oh, we out. get it. You have to go by state standard. We yeah, which is understand. pretty much you know, environmental it's, things, it's and then just up, they're, they're concerned. It's in the backyard. Will, so I would love to hear all the concern, and we'd like to incorporate the next one. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, somebody, want, somebody, one of the residents, did somebody want to speak or you just, you did. Sir, come on up. Name and address and uh, then we'll go to the commission. Hi, um, I'm John Pimentel. I represent uh, St. John's Lutheran Church. Uh, we're on uh, 10302 South 27th Street, directly across the mm -hmm. street from the proposed location. I have uh, several Call them grave concerns. Uh, first of which is addressing the environmental. Um, it's great that you have double wall containers. That's awesome. But um, Johns Hopkins did a study. Per pump, about 1,500 liters per year spills on the ground. Uh, looking at the canopy and the design, it looks like that's a 12 pump design. That calculates out to about 158 gallons of gas spilled on the ground. We also are on a well, so that's a serious concern for us. We have a tenant that is also on the shared well, an additional concern for them drinking water from that well on a daily basis. Uh, the traffic congestion with this plan, the, it does not look like there's any way for this to possibly work with, with fuel delivery uh, without them being on Oakwood Road. I don't see it happening. Um, we've been a resident of, of Oak Creek since 1843. Um, We've enjoyed that neighborhood being a quiet and, and reverent place for us to hold our services. I don't believe that will continue if we put a gas station across the street. Um, finally, I would echo that then, is there really a need for another fuel depot right here in this residential area? Do we have to rezone something that there's plenty of places to put a gas station in this town? Um, and finally, bar question mark. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you. much. Okay. Uh, come on, guys. Keep it to a minimum. Mike, uh, I'm going to bring you up first this time. How's that? Uh, Assistant Chief Havey. Uh, initial thoughts? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, good evening again. Uh, Mike Havey with, uh, with FIRE. Uh, initial thoughts for conditional use permit. Again, some of the access um, are, are concerned. Um, and really, this is a conditional use permit application. So, you know, code conformity for these type of developments, you know, that's what we would enforce is based on code conformity. Um, without that being said, the the traffic and the considerations, um, that goes without saying that, you know, for access and where the pumps are or the width of the access roads or internal to the, to the, the lot size, um, could be concerning and it's still if it, the fire protection services if it's going to be sprinkler versus non sprinkler building versus um, that it's just a retail gas station or service center some of those things are uncertain yet that from the initial proposal that doesn't appear to be there's going to be a service center there but um, some of those things may come to fruition without you know just the conditions use permit if it does change we would have some concerns over that okay thank you for the input um, go to the commission. Um, John, so you want to start us off? Sure. I, I do have a question for the applicant. He's good. Yeah, he's gonna, gonna, never mind. Go ahead. Come on up, sir. Uh, so, uh, one of my questions is in regards to to have a better understanding for parking. Can you identify approximately how many pumps will be on the site? 
the way the plan is right now, there'll be six pumps, which means that there's a, a 12 parking, um, you know, 12 car parking. And I think uh, if I remember correctly, the rest of them, uh, there's a 25 more. So the total are 37, I think required 32. So we can, at this time. Okay. And then my next question in regards to uh, some feedback from the residents. Can you provide information on plans to assist with protecting the wells in the area? Yes, that's what our plan is. Well, uh, they'll they'll have to follow code. I mean, if, one if, if a conditional use permit came through, they would have to hit all federal, state, and local. The state required uh, um, all the double wall tanks and all the double wall, uh, a 24 hour, at one minute, uh, it's all monitored. And uh, there's an air gap in between, which uh, if anything like water go out from the outside or it's just saying no liquid, which is a monitor 24 hour a day. And um, soon as in between, if any liquids find, that's when the everything shuts off. And then um, about, um, and then that's the reason it's just, you know, there's a, under the pumps, there's a second, secondary containment. Right now, especially Wisconsin, the rules are very, yeah, old times was different, you know, because of there was one single wall, and the, even like old stations still, they are updating those like secondary containment and stuff, but all the new, they are all secondary containments and it's almost like foolproof um, because of the before it happens, there's a like secondary containment where you have the alarm and everything shuts off. Okay, and then can you provide a little more information for this property identified as fuel cells and fueling plaza? What what's the plaza part? Plaza that's um, inside basically. There was a you know a convenience store, and then uh, uh, there's a mostly you know it's a we are thinking about you know if uh, down the road if there was a, a a bars available bar license available and allowed then uh, we have some one section of the bar. No, that's actually just a zoning category. So the fuel sales is not just incorporating. We are going to be selling, let's say, propane on, on, the, on the property. It's fuel sales and a fueling plaza, meaning that they have dispensers for fuel. Yes. So that, that's a zoning category. Okay. And what my understanding is that conditional use don't permit me to open up the bar. Only I, the way my understanding is conditional use is only for a gas tank, game, gas uh, selling the gasoline. The conditional use is for the fuel sales, the plaza, and a two-tenant retail building. The conditional so. use permit is not tied to the availability of liquor licenses. That Correct. is a separate. That's completely separate. Yeah, it's not. If there, if the planning commission were to approve of a conditional use permit for this proposal as presented, which would in, may include the bar. That does not mean that there would be sufficient licenses for them to then apply for a bar. Totally separate. So is there a different category for a bar? It's rolled into this conditional use permit request. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I mean, maybe my misunderstand my understanding is not right. My understanding, if you know if I'm wrong. I thought if in case in the event we want to open the bar, then I guess I need to come back in front of you for another condition of use. Is it right or no? No, that was part of this request. I'm going to go there right now. Are Brad? You? Okay. My concern is the environmental issue. The spilling of excess, excess of gas and filling up a car or a truck or a diesel because there's so many wells in the area that it could cause some potential of contamination. 
so it's hard to control that spillage and miscellaneous gas that gets out. We're not talking about a leaky tank, but just filling a car and so forth or gas cans. There is a potential that that fuel could get out into the surrounding area. I don't know how you would prevent that. Right now, the way the laws require, the way the equipment is, is almost remotely impossible. There's, there's a, you know, there's a, if you see the gas station right there uh, near the hose, there's a, if somebody pushes the hose out a little bit, it shuts off the hose. And same thing if somebody pumping the gas, it, it shuts off. The, the, otherwise, I mean, there are a lot of mechanics. So almost uh, old time was different, but now almost impossible. That's why I, I mean, here anywhere, uh, the bigger, fast, you know, high speed truck stop. There's a little bit different because those are high speed one. But uh, this is gas station, and gas station is almost impossible. If you go to a gas station, you know, there's um, automatic. Yeah, we get it. The breakaways and the whole deal. So yes. They, He's trying to say they limit what they spill. It doesn't account for human error. And so, uh, again, we're you know we're getting a little into the weeds here on, on that kind of stuff. Let's just kind of keep it on on the focus of what the conditional use says on this agenda. Thank you. All right. Is that it, Fred? Don. Uh, in, environment aside, bar liquor store aside, a gas station here makes. Zero cents, and that's all I'm gonna say. No, okay. no, 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 no. Stop no. on that. No, no, you got multiple gas stations within two miles to the north and the south. That that's that's all that needs to be said. Thank you. Okay, Chris. Um, right now, as it stands, I wouldn't support this um, as presented. Greg. Um, just a couple of questions, I guess, for clarification. Right now it's zoned B4, correct? That is correct. Um, comprehensive plan lists it as potential single family? So the conflict between the comprehensive plan and the existing zoning we have seen before, and there is no real mechanism by which we can require a comprehensive plan amendment since this does not require a rezone, it is allowed to proceed under the B4 zoning. It is not required to be rezoned. Um, and then I guess another point of clarification question. In the B4 district that it currently is, could someone, I'm not saying this, could someone come forward with a bar, no gas station? They would not need a conditional use permit, is that correct? They would likely need they would likely need more review, and I will leave it at that. Okay. Um, and then I guess just a note, I, I'll differ from other commissioners. I don't have too much concern over the environmental of the modern gas station. Um, that's easy for me to get on board with. Those are the only two I can really get my head around. Um, but because of my big time position, um, we often look at fueling deserts. There's a lot of concern about areas can't fuel. I believe in this area there are more than enough gas stations to service that part of the community. So I'm going to leave it at that. Thank okay. you. Ashley. Well, one of our main concerns is with access, um, how trucks will access the site off of 27th Street, just maneuvering to get to the bar. Okay. On? Um, you know, being the for area, um, it's going to be, I can't see a residential house going in here, so it's going to be people of some sort, um, whether it be this or so, or you know, a bar or whatever goes in that corner, it's a high, high visible corner. Um, I don't think we're ready to um, approve this right now, but um, you know, I think we all know it's probably going to end up being something that goes in that back house. Um, so um, that's all the comments I have. Okay. Ian? I think everything has been said, so I have no more comments. Okay.
Okay. Um, yeah, everything really kind of has been said. I think the important thing, and we got a lot of residents here, and I really do thank you for coming out and all the effort you put in, and it's really been uh, I think the point's been made. This is a, a B4 district on 27th Street. Um, there are businesses that will be allowed, as, as Alderman Lark kind of alluded to. Um, I don't think this is the appropriate one here with the commissioner. Uh, th this is a very active, complicated business. It's very nice. Don't get me wrong. It, you know, they're they're needed and they're prosperous. But you know, there there were many points on where this may not be the right location for this. So, um, at this time, you know, I would not support this item moving forward. Um, I guess I'll just kind of leave it at that because we've really talked a, you know, a lot about it and the whole thing. So. Um, you know, the applicant had talked about withdrawing and going back, but I think this input is valuable uh, as to what he does, whether it's in his community or elsewhere, to better prepare and when you're, you're looking at a business venture like this uh, to make sure you've worked with staff and, more importantly, the residents going forward in a healthy way. So um, we've had an interesting night here at planning tonight, <laughs> 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 say the least, but uh, it's always a learned experience. So. Uh, with that, I'll ask commissioners, is there anything else? Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, yes. I'd like to ask the applicant if he wishes to withdraw or if he wishes the plan commission to rule on the application as submitted. Sir, uh, could you come up and just kind of um, affirm if you'd like to withdraw or... If you would through. like the plan commission to rule on the, on the application. Um, I would like to withdraw. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out uh, and spending your Tuesday night with us. <laughs> Try to keep it a little lighthearted. Um, anyhow, just, just a couple short announcements because I usually give the announcements and we don't have this kind of crowd. So at this time, I'm going to hand it over to Dawn Carrillo. She is our farmer's market manager. She's going to tell you what's going on at the market this week. Yeah. I want to see you all there on Saturday, okay? <laughs> uh, we're going to enter our 14th week, 15th week, sorry about that. Um, we go uh, to the end of October, and uh, apples, the orchards are in, and uh, we have a great great setup for this week, so hope to see you guys there. You know, going forward, uh, Labor Day weekend comes. We have the traditional Lions Fest going on within the city, but this fall, there's lots going on as well. The Fall Fest will continue. We also have an event called Cafe the first week of October. Uh, a lot of diverse culture groups come into the square and demonstrate their culture, art, food, and entertainment. So hopefully you can join us. If you haven't been there, it's really a nice day. Uh, this year it's going to follow up on the heels of the farmer's market. So first week of October. I uh, invite you to all join in. So is there anything else I missed? Mm -hmm. If not, motion to adjourn somebody. Rello moves to adjourn at 748. Beeper seconds. Uh, roll call beginning with Greg. Lorak, aye. Kavich, aye. Kuzikowski, aye. Aldani, aye. Sleepert, aye. Chandler, aye. Hannah, aye. Perlow, aye. Kuczynski, aye. All right, good night, everybody. Again, thanks for coming out. <laughs>